What's up, Philip Procrastinators? I'm Flamecom. So, one night I was just bored and filming random objects here and there in my, well, new place here. And I remember there was this one aspect of cameras that I was always, a uh, like really interested in learning more about and that was crop factors. So yeah, I've always been interested in this topic. I remember having like uh, the, a discussion about this with uh, the Hitbox crew back when we filmed Hitbox over at the Glitch Productions. Back in my early YouTube days, I had no idea how crop factors worked. In fact, here is what I said back when I unboxed my uh, 10 to 22. 10 to 22 millimeters. On a cropped sensor, it provides a uh, full frame equivalent of 16 to 35 so millimeters, so it's not actually 10 to 22. And uh I had no idea what I was talking about back then. So yes, in my video, the does sensor size affect your depth of field video, I really came to the understanding that a different sensor size uh, affects how far or how close you position your camera. So for example, a smaller sensor might result in you having to zoom out uh, or uh, reduce your focal length. Uh, so that your subject can fit in the frame or maybe you even have to move back further away from the subject. And yeah, both of those actions make uh, having a blurry background harder in like uh, film situations. You can check that video out here in this card, but for now, just, just stay right here. Just stay right here. Come on, come along with me. Like, yes, we talk about what's called the full frame equivalent. To get the same field of view as a full frame camera would on a 20 millimeter lens then on a micro four thirds camera you would have to get a 10 millimeter lens because the crop factor of micro four thirds is two times so two times 10 millimeters equals 20 millimeters and this goes the same for other crop bodies so once again two times for micro four thirds 1.6 times for canon APS-C uh, 1.5 times for Nikon, well, okay, pretty much every other APS-C cameras. And then, um, yeah, I think that's about it, right? Oh, no, hold on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's just, um, there, there's, like, some other, like, leeways here and there, like the GH5S and the Pocket 4K. It actually has a 1.9 times crop factor. So, yeah, hooray, right? It's a win-win situation, isn't it? Like, not only can you get the same field of view as, like, a full frame with a camera body and a camera lens that's smaller and lighter making it you know less of a physical strain on you and also you know better for running gun stuff but um yeah it's just uh, i think the cost it, the cost just makes sense as well okay no well retract that micro four thirds can get pretty expensive like for goodness sakes this uh hold on let me just get it all right, yeah, 12 to 35 millimeter Panasonic, uh, the Mark II, it's like, it was like over a thousand Australian dollars. And it's like more expensive than like the Sigma 18 to 35, which is in many, in, in many aspects, a superior lens optically. Well, I mean, there are several factors here that make that mark up the prices, like, um, like image stabilization, uh, weather sealing, well, maybe weatherproof, but maybe not fully weather sealed. Oh, of course. Portability as well, I guess, but yeah, it's it's still, so. Anyways, the point is, this is quite a lot more expensive than uh, the Sigma 18 to 35, which is being used, uh, which is being attached to the, the camera that's filming me right now. Yeah, so all fine and dandy, right? No, the problem is that um, even though you're getting the same field of view, the that uh, Micro Four Thirds with the 10 millimeter, it's still capturing an image or well, filming a video with the same distortion and the same lens compression properties of a 10 millimeter. All that's happening is that it's being cropped in because of how physically smaller the uh, Micro Four Thirds uh, sensor is. And that cropped in image is has the same field of view as a 20 millimeter on a full frame. That's what's going on. So take for example, this establishing shot in uh, Hitbox episode three. So it starts off with uh, Luke walking down the uh, like dangerous looking alleyway with like vodka bottles in the foreground and stuff. Oh yes, by the way, I should point out that's like pretty much one of my favorite sequences uh, that uh, shot in a uh, hitbox. <laughs> so yes, note the foreground and background. Originally, we shot this at uh, 10 millimeters on the Canon EOS R. It was a Canon EOS R with a 10 to 22 millimeter lens. And due to the wide focal length, um, the foreground was like, was so far away from Luke in the background because 
uh, one property of a wide angle lens is that the distance between a foreground object and a background object is overly exaggerated. It looks like they are miles and miles away. Hello, 10 millimeter flame comes speaking to you here. My face, the foreground here, and then the background right back there. Oh yeah, just gonna have to slightly move the camera a little. Yeah, just note the diff, note like the sort of distance between me and uh, those curtains back there, right? I'm just gonna zoom in. Oh, so close. Okay, yeah, main problem was that Luke was just too tiny in the in the background. And so in later takes, which went into the final uh, video, I just told the cam up to uh, zoom in slightly on the lens so that Luke was actually distinguishable and you could actually see him. Also too, 10 millimeters being how wide it is, it's gonna struggle to have that bokehlicious blurry background. So yes, while I was in all that train of thought, um, like when I was filming the other night, uh, yeah, I remember the concept of like focal reducers. I'm using it right now. It's the Viltrox EF M2 and it has a focal reduction of 0.71. The 0.71 times or the point, uh, was it 0.64 times? Yeah, that's just multiplied to that, uh, to those crop factors that I mentioned before. All you do with these numbers is you multiply it by uh, the 0.71 or the 0.64 uh, focal reduction that I just mentioned and then boom, you do that. And there you have it, you have your new crop factor. <clears throat> so I knew that my Canon 80D was 1.6 and my Panasonic G7 was uh, two times because it's a micro four thirds. But two times 0.71 would give me a crop factor of 1.42. So that means, given the same focal length, on my Panasonic G7, I'm just gonna call it Panny's G7, I would be getting a wider field of view than my Canon 80D would. Yeah, I alluded to this in my Viltrox EF-M2 unboxing video. So yeah, it's like light bulb moment. It was amazing. Like I immediately set out to test this out because like 1.6 and 1.42 is quite a marginal difference. To conduct this experiment, I used the same Sigma 18 to 35 lens. And what I did was keep the tripod in place and then swap the camera bodies and just take extra care not to nudge it or anything whilst I was uh, swapping the Panny G7 to 80D and vice versa. To ensure the reliability of the results that I got, I had these fixed variables. First was setting down a mosquito repellent into the center of the frame. And second was using the same tripod, like not moved or anything, taking extra care not to bump it or anything. And the third variable was using the same Sigma 18 to 35 lens. Now the things that I couldn't control were the human error. So particularly like screwing on the tripod mount, which actually is attached to my camera right now. Now, yeah, it's screwed on with a coin like that. Now, I can't guarantee that every time I screw on the uh, tripod mount that it would be perfectly aligned and facing forward at ex the exact degree as it was last time. But this is where the mosquito repellent comes in. Like, being that it's in the center of the frame, it works to, like, mitigate this human error as well as much as humanly possible really because if it was like slightly like a few angles to the left or the right uh, on the mounting point then i would see in the frame oh it's a bit off center so like i would adjust accordingly also too the mounting points for the tripod mount was different uh, for the cameras so when i have to screw on the tripod mount onto my uh, panny g7 i has to actually screw on to the mount that's on the Viltrox EF-M2. And then when I swap it over to the Canon 80D, I just screw it on the body itself. And so as a result of that, the position of the camera sensor, which is where the image is actually captured, was like shifted ever so slightly. So the results aren't exactly one-to-one -one in terms of like how close they are to the, like to the subjects, even though the tripod remained in the same spot. And here are the initial results. Now, at first, I legitimately thought that I hypothesized wrong that um, maybe or maybe like 1.6 and 1.42, maybe it's not that big of a difference. But then I remembered something on my Panny G7 when I'm recording in 4K, the image crops in slightly. So then I switched over from 4K to 1080p 60 FPS and lo and behold, it's a big difference. It's like much wider than the Canon 80D, given the same focal length, like the tripod being in the same position, all that fun stuff. So yes, hypothesis, spot on. Pairing a Viltrox EF-M2 onto my Panny G7 
gave it a 1.42 crop factor. And yeah, just got to reiterate over and over again. It meant that my Penny G7, given the same lens and the same position, was yielding a wider result than my Canon 80D was. Now, after this, I filmed a few more examples here and there because they say that the hallmark of a good experiment is that it's repeatable. So, there you have it. Eventually, when I get the Pocket 4K, which is right now on my on my wish list as my dream camera, that lens is gonna have like a 1.9 times crop factor. So if you multiply that by 0.71, that's gonna give you 1.349 uh, times crop factor. Personally, I'm not really looking to get the 0.64 times, which gives you, which makes it even closer to full frame, which uh, it's like 1.2 or 1.1, something crazy like that. It's just personal taste. I don't uh, really like that with a full frame uh, video. It like everything looks like it's blurry background. It's like the your depth of field is like too shallow. Like it looks cool in photos, but for videos, I want to stick to Super 35 as my main point of reference. So for example, if someone says, put on like the 50 millimeter lens, I want to understand that like in relation to the Super 35 in how it'll affect my framing and how it'll affect where I position a camera and uh, so on and so forth. Like, because they say like practice makes perfect. And if you make like this one thing, like the constant and especially so if it's like an industry standard, then I can work on like refining myself like and my skill sets even more. Now granted on a side note there's no definitive size for what a Super 35 is. The Pocket 6K says it has a Super 35 but then Bruh. there's this one red camera with the Super 35 center and it's like much bigger than the Pocket 6K version. I nearly said Pocket 4K. But yes because there's no real actual standard as to how big Super 35 uh, sensor has to be um, yeah, it gives me a leeway for like how big I want my Super 35 understanding to be. So if I get the Pocket 4K and then I pair a speed booster to it, then like, and I get that 1.349 times crop factor, then that, that crop factor sort of sits comfortably between full frame and between, let's say like 1.5 or 1.6, which is like the APS-C sort of uh, ballpark. Not too big, but not too small. And it's like a happy medium. So that's my two cents on the matter. Um, I don't know if there's an Aussie saying for it. Uh, it's more of an American saying, but hey, I'll just say it anyways. Well, it's not actually two cents, but uh, it's actually, uh, let's see, one yuan or one kuai, as they say in uh, mainland China. So yeah, with that said, I hope you found this uh, video informational. Drop a like down below if you love this sort of techie um, educational rant video from me and really just whilst you're down there leave some constructive comments about um, what you think I should improve on what you think I should change and like uh, whether you like the style of these videos or not and whether or not you want to see more of it like personally I really like love talking about this sort of stuff and um, it just gets me really fired up and uh, in the future I want to like I want to do more and more of these and because I want to keep doing it, I want to just keep on improving myself in how I do it and in my presentation style and production quality, all that good stuff. So with that said, thanks for watching and keep on procrastinating. So see ya. I'm sorry, camera conspiracies. Uh, I will stop doing the camera slam thing now. The grooves here, they like hit the lens hood. And then I feel my finger joints aching like the next day when I wake up. God damn. All right, cut.